So if any of you have ever had the experience of living abroad, uh, there are always aspects of different cultures that, that are different to ours. You know, when you, when you live abroad, if you live in America, uh, if you live in, on the continent, France or Spain or Germany, there are always different mental, mentalities, different things, um, which can help us under, understand ourselves as well. You know, when we have a point of comparison, we go, oh, we'd never do that. Um, I remember I was in Italy and uh, a man was driving the wrong way down a one-way street and then a car came against him coming the right way, you know, coming the right way, and the guy driving the wrong way gets out of the car and goes, oh, <laughs> like, he was clearly in the wrong, but he gets, he gets absolutely irate at the other one, uh, even though he's way, way, way out of line, way out of line. Or in, in Ireland, for example, if someone blows the horn at you, if you're driving through a city and someone blows the horn at you, you'll come home and you'll ask your husband or wife, am I a good person? Because someone, someone blew the horn at me today, maybe... Maybe I'm, maybe I'm not a good person. Whereas initially, sure, everyone's just blowing at everyone. It just makes no difference at all, you know? But I remember once it was um, after a mass, uh, uh, someone came to me, and they used an expression I'd never heard before. Uh, and they, said, they said, Se buono come il pane. You're, you're as good as bread. They said to me, Thank you, Father. You're as good as bread. And I stood there kind of thinking, Is this a good thing? Because where, where, I, where I come from, bread isn't considered good. Bread is like, you know, you're, it's like you're as good as a drink of water, which they do, I think they say as well, actually. You're as good as a drink of water, which, again, if you're Irish, that's, 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 that means you're really boring and common. <laughs> but the point that they make is like, it's a, it's a you're, you're as good as bread, because for them, like, uh, for Italians, bread is like p potatoes for us, you know. It's like the, the staple of your existence, bread. You know, uh, and it's, it's very, very important to them in, in, in their culture. The, the opposite of that, by the way, is you're as ugly as hunger. That's the expression they use. Say, say brutto come la fame. You're as ugly as hunger. Again, something we would never say in Ireland or in English. Uh, you're, as ugly, you're, as, you're as good as bread. You're as ugly as hunger. But it does... It does show something about their culture, about their mentality, right? The importance of food. The importance of food and what a disaster it is to be hungry. Because if for both of our cultures, Italians and us, um, our famines weren't that long ago. Like, Italy up until relatively recently, in, in quite a lot of places, was a, I wouldn't say poor, but a very simple existence. It's even why the pizza, for example, the, the most, most Italian food is designed in such a way that you don't need much meat if you have pastas or a pizza, like basically two rashers will make a carbonara for eight people. Just two rashers, whereas that's not even the beginning of an Irish breakfast. Do you know what I mean? But like, because they had to make meat, they had to stretch meat as much as they could because they didn't have it. So it just gets us thinking, hopefully, about this, 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 this question of, of, of hunger. When we come to Mass, when we come to the Lord, it would be an awful, I think, wasted opportunity to come to Mass with no hunger at all. So we, like, like, there are all sorts of uh, biblical images of what the Mass is, the wedding feast of the Lamb. A feast, a celebration. You know, even the uh, Book of Revelation talks about these, such a, a, a celestial vision, if you will, of all these hundreds and thousands of people gathered for this wedding feast, which involves food. You know, and scripture talks about, uh, you know, fine strained wines and succulent food. But imagine coming to something like that with no appetite. Imagine coming to that and you're already actually stuffed. Maybe you just had six Mars bars on the way here. And you get here and you're just not hungry. So now we're, we're offered this uh, incredible privilege and gift and we have no appetite for it. And again, I think this is actually probably more common than, than we believe. If we come to Mass... With, with no hunger, with no desire for the Lord, then we're not going to find satisfaction in what we receive because we weren't hungry. It's like, uh, you know, all good parents do it. Like, they won't allow their kids to eat chocolate or biscuits before dinner. Why? You'll ruin your appetite. You get to lunchtime and you're just not hungry because you're stuffed full of biscuits. Now you don't eat the good food because you're stuffed full of sugar. And I think our world is very much like that at the moment. We have so much entertainment and so many ways of very quickly satisfying all sorts of appetites. But then we come to Mass, and I think we're, not, we're often not hungry for what's available to us here. 
the bread of life. And I don't, I don't even like using the word bread because I think it creates a bit of confusion, but you know what I mean. It is called, that's what it's called, but it's not bread. It's the whole point. It's not bread. But we come here to, to receive the Lord. But if I'm not hungry for that, if that's not what I want, then chances are I'll come to Mass and I'll leave, as they say in Italian, tale quale, I'll leave exactly as I left. I, I, I'll leave unchanged. Because what was offered to me didn't satisfy my hunger because I didn't come hungry anyway. So hunger, in a way, also for the body, hunger is a good thing. Hunger tells us when we need to eat next. Hunger tells us that, for example, rice cakes aren't actually food. You know, you eat rice cakes and you're still hungry, i.e. rice cakes aren't food. Okay, is that clear? Uh, so uh, so hunger, hunger is a good thing. Hunger it tells us when we, when we need nourishment. It's a good thing. So when we, when we arrive at Mass and, and, and we have this hunger for the Lord, it's actually a really good thing. When you're in love and the person you love is, is away from you, they're in a foreign country for work or they've had to isolate, oh, Jane, isolation, they've had to isolate for a while, you know, for a week or two, and you miss them, it's actually a good thing. You look at their photo or their picture or whatever it is and uh, you read, back in the day you would have read their letters, now you read their texts, it's not really the same thing because the print is always the same. But, and you kind of connect with them again and you're counting down the days hours and minutes until you can see them again see them and actually embrace them and actually talk to them and actually be with just spend even if you don't talk at all just spend time with them there's a hunger there's a desire and it's a good thing because if you're in love you wouldn't have it any other way if someone said i have a solution to this hunger desire you know that you won't miss them anymore you'd say i don't want it i want to miss them because i love them i want to miss them you know, if, even, even in a, kind of a, a more serious thing, but in, in, in terms of bereavement, someone dies. If someone came to you with a pill and said, if I give you this pill, you won't remember this person who has died anymore. You'll, you'll be cured of your grief. I think most people would say, no, I, I want to remember them. And actually, I want to grieve them. This is, this, is, this, is, this is natural. I love them, and so I miss them. And it's good that I miss them, because it shows I loved them. I do miss them. I wouldn't change it. It's hard, but I wouldn't change it. We have this hunger to be with the person, and God willing, that hunger will be satisfied in heaven. But what I'm saying is it's the importance of, of coming to Mass and to, to, recognize, to recognize the hunger that we should have. And if it's not there, if I, don't, if I come to Mass without a hunger, without a desire for the Lord, then I think that's a question that needs answering. That's a, a situation that needs resolving. Why aren't I hungry? What do I fill my heart with? What do I fill my mind with? What, what do I fill my day with? What do, I, what do I fill my time with that now the Lord doesn't, doesn't satisfy me anymore? Or is it a case of, as you often see, people who are losing weight uh, when, or trying to lose weight, they just drink tons and tons and tons of water. You're hungry for food, but you keep throwing in water, so it keeps your stomach cool, so it kind of fools your stomach into thinking it has, it has something in it, even though it's only water. Uh, so maybe that's kind of what's happening in our world or in our, in, in our lives as well, that we're busy with all sorts of other things, running around like a Martha. When what the Lord is saying is, come to me, all you who labor and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. Shoulder my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. So let us come, let us approach the altar hungry. Because what the Lord offers, no one else, nothing else can satisfy. What he offers, you have been created for. You've been created for God. So nothing else is going to satisfy you. Not even the most wonderful husband or wife in the world. Nothing will satisfy the deepest longings of your heart more than God. So let's come to him. Let's come to him hungry. Let's come to him full of desire for what he offers. And let us discover that reality that only he can make us whole. May we, like Mary, choose the better part and may it never be taken from us. Amen.